as well. Yes, I'll But then she met. She met the master. Ready, Israel. Ready, Israel. Who told? Ready, Israel. And then he said, if you'll drink of this one, you'll never thirst again. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Our station, our talent, our people. God bless you and welcome to this evening's broadcast of a study in the word with me, Evangelist Alma, from the Cape Town Tabernacle Church. And I greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, there's no other name as wonderful as the name of Jesus. There's no other name given under heaven by which man must be saved. It is only the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have forgiveness of sins, and there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, my name is a human name, but the name of Jesus is a divine name. The name of Jesus means God the Savior. Hallelujah. 712 years before his birth, it was predicted in Isaiah 7 verse 14. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel being interpreted means God with us. Hallelujah. And that is who Jesus is. He's Emmanuel. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 9 verse 5 and 6 it is written that unto us a son is given, unto us a child is born, and he shall be called Wonderful, Mighty God, uh, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yes. So we see that Jesus is called even the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father. So we just give all the glory and the praise unto him. For he alone is worthy. I am a man and I will fail, but God will never fail. My words can change, but God's word cannot change. The Bible says in in Matthew 24 verse 35 that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. So we have that assurance, yes, that blessed assurance that the word of God shall remain forever. And we can put our hope and our faith, our trust and our confidence in the Holy Bible. Yes. So we call this program a study in the word. And that is what it is all about, studying the word of God. And without the spirit of God, we are unable to do so. So we need the spirit to teach us. It is written in Isaiah 54 that all your children shall be taught of God. And that scripture was also repeated in the gospel according to John in the New Testament that all your children shall be taught of God. Jesus says in the book of John chapter 6 that no man can come to me unless my father draws him first. Yes. And it is written that all your children shall be uh, taught of God. So God is the one that does the calling. God is the one that does the drawing. And God is also the one that does the teaching. Hallelujah. So he teaches us by his spirit and through his spirit. But he doesn't do that just randomly but he placed in his body also teachers hallelujah if you read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to verse 13 the Bible says he gave some apostles others prophets others pastors others teachers and evangelists so yes there is a teaching ministry and this is what this program is about is just to teach the word of God to mankind. This is also a direct command of Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 where Jesus says, Go ye therefore, making disciples of all nations. And another translation also says, Go ye therefore, teaching all nations. So there is a preaching ministry and there is a teaching ministry. So this program is devoted to teaching the word of God. Yes, to just teach it. And for those of you that are tuned in and have your Bibles ready, you can turn with me please to the book of 1 John chapter number 2 and we shall read from verse 18. The Bible says, Little children, it is the last time and as you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. But they went out 
that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not yet written unto you, you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And ye know that he is righteous. Ye know that everyone that doth righteousness is born of him. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. So once again tonight, quite a lengthy number of verses that I read to give you a full background of what we are going to bring to the table. And tonight we want to speak of the spirit of the Antichrist. Hallelujah. So we just read from 1 John chapter number 2. And we see that very clear details are given here. And even a distinction is being made between the Antichrist and also Antichrist. Hallelujah. So there is more than one Antichrist. Yes. And the Apostle John was clearly writing and he told the church, which is called the little children, hallelujah, God as children. And for you to become a child of God, you become a child through birth. In the natural, I became a son of my father and my mother through birth. I did not go knocking at the door and asking if I could join the family, but I became part of the family through birth. Hallelujah. And the same applies in the kingdom of God. You need to be born into the kingdom of God. John 3 verse 3, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then in verse 5, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So for you to go to heaven and for you to be part of the family of God, you need to be born of God. You need to have a born again experience. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, the Bible says that Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. But for those that have received him, gave he the power to become the sons of God. Of those that are not born of the blood or the will of a man, but are born of God. Hallelujah. So this letter is addressed to the born again believers, to the children of God. And he told them that it is the last time, meaning it is the last days. It is the end time. Hallelujah. And you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. It is the end time. Now people, this is the absolute reality of the day and age in which we are living. We are living in the last days. We are living in the end time. Hallelujah. And the Bible gave clear descriptions of what the world would be like in the end time. If you read, for instance, in the book of Luke 17, verse 26 to verse 28, Jesus compares the condition of the world as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. So the world today is in the same condition as it was in the days of Noah. The world has become evil and perverted and corrupt, and it is filled with violence. Yes. And Jesus also made mention that as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man will be revealed. And we know that Lot stayed in that city by the name of Sodom, where there was sexual perversion. And today it has become the order of the day. It has been normalized uh, sexual perversion, which violates the clear laws of God, God's commandments. Now, we're not going to go into detail in that, but these are all signs that point that we are in the last days. We are in the last time. We are in the end time. Hallelujah. If you read 2 Timothy 
Chapter number three, the Bible says that in the last days perilous times shall come. And then it gives detailed descriptions of how the world would be. How that men would be traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, fierce, incontinent, despisers of those that are good, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You can read the entire verses in detail. And if you compare what is written in the Bible and you look at the condition of the world, it matches identical. Hallelujah. And we see that we are in the last time. We are in the last days. We are in the end time. Hallelujah. And in the end times, it is predicted that there will rise a figure who is called the Antichrist. Hallelujah. And we read about him. His origin is in actual fact in heaven. Yes, the Antichrist is a spirit, hallelujah. It is Satan himself, yes, and Satan we know is also a spirit, yes. Now, the Antichrist spirit manifested upon the earth in the form of Judas Iscariot, just as the spirit of God manifested in the Christ, Jesus, hallelujah. We see that in the book of Matthew chapter 26, Jesus referred to, to Judas or the, the, the gospel describes that Satan entered into him. So we have the Christ and we have the Antichrist. The Christ has the spirit of God in him and the Antichrist has the spirit of the devil in him. Yes, so the word anti means against. So if we speak about the anti-Christ, we speak about the one that is against Christ. Yes, and we can compare the Christ and the Antichrist, and then we can see that they are like polar opposites. Hallelujah. Now, Christ says in John 5, verse 43, I am come in my Father's name. The Antichrist comes in his own name. We see that Christ humbled himself. Hallelujah. But the Antichrist exalts himself above everything. Now, I've spoken on previous broadcasts here and there about the Antichrist that would come according to 2 Thessalonians Chapter number two, and he would sit in the temple of God and he would pretend to be God and he would receive worship as though he is God. So the Antichrist will be a physical human being possessed by the spirit of the devil, just as the spirit of the devil was in Judas. And Judas was called the son of the perdition. So also the Antichrist that is to come, he will also be the son of perdition. We see that the Christ, he was despised and rejected by men, if you read Isaiah 53. But the Antichrist will be one that will be worshipped and celebrated in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. We see that Christ is the true prophet that Moses wrote about in Deuteronomy 18 where he says that God will raise up a prophet like unto myself and you should hearken unto him. So Christ is the true prophet, but the Antichrist is the false prophet. Hallelujah. Christ came to do the will of God. If you read in Hebrews chapter 10, he says, I, it is written of me in the scroll. I come to do thy will, O God. But we see the Antichrist does whatever he wa wants to. He does his own thing, his own will. We see that Christ came to the save the lost. If you read Luke 19 verse 10, Christ came to save, but the Antichrist, the Bible says in Daniel 11 verse 36 that he will destroy the saints. We see that Christ submitted himself to the law. He says in Matthew 5 verse 17 that I came not to break the law but to fulfill the law. But the Antichrist is called the lawless one. You can read in Daniel 7 verse 25. You can read in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. The Bible calls him the lawless one. Yes, so it is this one that will come. The Bible even says he will try to change times and seasons. And that we see in church history that the Antichrist did accomplish. Yes, even when it comes to the seventh day of the week which we know is Saturday. We see that the times were changed by the Antichrist religious system and it was uh, made to, to appear as though as though the first day of the week is the seventh day of the week or the Sunday, but in actual fact it is not. We see that the, the, the Christ is called the Son of God, but the Antichrist is called the Son of Perdition. Christ is called the mystery of godliness. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels. Hallelujah. 
uh, taken up into glory, believed on into the world. But we see with the Antichrist, yes, he is called the mystery of iniquity. So the Christ is the mystery of godliness, but the Antichrist is the mystery of iniquity. So we see that they are polar opposites. And the actual Antichrist figure is uh, a human being that will be upon the earth in the last days. And he will be possessed by the devil and he will be used as a tool by the devil and he will receive worship. So there is an actual Antichrist figure that will rise. And we see that this Antichrist figure has been there throughout the ages. Yes, that spirit of the Antichrist. But it will finally manifest in this individual that will rise according to Revelation chapter 13. He will rise as the false prophet. Hallelujah. And we see also that except for the actual Antichrist figure, the Apostle John was writing that there are many Antichrists and that they went out from us, but they were not from us. Hallelujah. So this Antichrist is something that started long time ago. Yes, we see that when Christ was upon the earth, the Antichrist was upon the earth. When God was in Christ, we see that Satan was in Judas. And we see that after Jesus died, we see that he's, he told the thief on the cross, today you shall be with me in paradise. But we see it on the day of Calvary. There was Jesus in the middle and then two next to him. One was saved, one was lost. But there was actually a fourth one also upon a cross or upon a tree. And that was Judas Iscariot. Because the Bible says that he went to hang himself. And the Bible says that cursed is he that hangs upon a tree. So we see that Judas also was on a cross or on a tree. And when he died, he went back to the perdition from where he came from, from hell. And the one thief on the one side of Jesus went with Judas. But we see that Jesus going into paradise took the believer with him to paradise. And we see the Christ taking someone to paradise and we see the Antichrist taking somebody to perdition. Yes, so after Jesus rose from the dead, and he went up into heaven. He sent his spirit down 50 days later upon the church. And when the spirit of God came down, we see that the Antichrist spirit also came back out of perdition. And just as the true spirit of God has been leading the true church from the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, we see also that the Antichrist spirit started also there right in the beginning to try and oppose, to try and change, to try and make the word say something that it doesn't say. Yes, but we have this explicit warning as the church and we have an unction of the Holy One, an anointing. And it is the anointing of God that teaches you, hallelujah, and that gives you discernment to know what is the true and what is the false. Now, without that anointing, you can't have discernment. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit anoints and the Holy Spirit gives you discernment. Yes. So that you can distinguish between what is right and wrong. Now, the, the true church stayed with what Christ taught and what the apostles taught. But then we see Antichrist creeping into the church. Yes. And they came and changed and teach something opposite something contrary to what Christ and the apostles had already taught hallelujah and they came and changed things yes and that is the beginning of the antichrist spirit that crept into the church the apostle Paul was also giving this warning back then already in Acts chapter 20 and he spoke and gave this warning he said that after my departure Grievous wolves shall enter in among you. From yourselves men shall rise and speak perverse things, yes, to draw disciples after them. And we see that is how the Antichrist spirit started right there in the first church age, yes. And we see people came in and started to teach and preach things contrary to what Jesus and the apostles had taught. And today, that spirit is still in the church world today. It is still very religious, the spirit of the Christ and the spirit of the Antichrist. And even in our day and age, those two spirits are so close together. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 24, that if it were possible to deceive even the very elect, Jesus says there will arise false Christ and false prophets and they shall do great signs and wonders if it were possible to deceive the very elect. Now we're going to take a break quickly. We're going to listen to that song again. There is a river. After that, we return to tonight's broadcast of a study in the word. God bless you. Ready, yes, river. Ready, yes, river. Ready, yes, river. Ready, yes, river. Ready, 
Butcher's Market offers the best quality, locally sourced and 100% halal meats. Visit our store at Sanbury Square Mall. Contact us at 021-565-0499 TPM for your halal meats. Radio Yesterafir, ons stasi, ons talent, ons mense. WhatsApp ons by 064-536-9095. Talk to us, die ding ruk hier. Jou klom terug op Radio Yesterafir. Yesterafir, our station, our talent, our people. Die ding ruk hier. 
God bless you and welcome back to tonight's broadcast of A Study in the Word with me, Brother Elmar, from the Cape Town Tabernacle Church, addressing you live here from the studios of Radio Easter River in Cape Town, South Africa. Yes, so I'm here to obey the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and He said in Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore teaching all nations. And through this radio station, I have the opportunity to teach all nations. So just spread the word out there about our local internet radio station. We are currently the leading internet radio station in Cape Town. And you can catch us live on Facebook on our Radio Easter River page. You can join our TikTok live on the Radio Easter TikTok profile. You can check out our website for the live stream and to learn more about Radio Easter River. Or you can just download the Radio Easter River app on the play store may the lord bless you for that and for those of you that have your bible just draw them closer we are speaking tonight about the spirit of the antichrist yes the antichrist spirit so we've now discussed and showed you in the holy scripture that there is a character an individual that will rise in the last days called the antichrist but we also want to speak in this the plural about the antichrist so we know there is a singular individual that will arise called the Antichrist, but we also want to speak about the spirit of the Antichrist and then the in the plural, the Antichrist. And we see that the anointing, that is what John taught us in 1 John 2 verse 27, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in him. And you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it have taught you, you shall abide in him. Now it is through the anointing that we receive discernment, hallelujah, that we can discern between the true teaching and the false teaching. Yes, between the true Christ and the Antichrist, between the true prophets and the false prophets. But you can only receive the true anointing if you first receive the true word. Hallelujah. Paul writes in Ephesians 1 verse 13, After you have heard the word of truth, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So first you receive the true word, and then you receive the true anointing, the true Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And then he says in Ephesians 4 verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you have been sealed until the day of your redemption. So the true teaching is the one that goes forth first, and then forth follows the true anointing yes and it is that true anointing that spirit of god that seals you it seals you into the kingdom of god it seals you to everlasting life but then we have those that receive the false teaching or the false word and also with that goes a false spirit a wrong spirit paul was writing in second corinthians 11 and he was speaking He's concerned for the church that people would come and preach another Jesus and receive another spirit. So we see there is a close connection between the true teaching and the true spirit. The same applies to the false teaching and the false spirit. And we see that those that have received the true word, they are the ones that are sealed with the true spirit of God. They are the ones that have the true anointing and are able to discern between that which is not of God. But those that have received the wrong teaching, the wrong word, they are the ones that have been also anointed with the wrong spirit. Yes. So there is where you draw the line, the distinction. Now the true teaching came from Jesus Christ and Jesus taught it to the apostles and even in Acts 1 verse 4 he says that Jesus gave commandments to the apostles through the Holy Spirit and the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone that is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20 and also in Acts chapter 2 we read in verse 41 that they remain steadfastly in the apostles doctrine so that is the true church with the true teaching and it has the true spirit of God. But right there in the first century, we see that the spirit of the Antichrist crept into the church. And if you read Revelation chapter number 2 and 3, you will find it recorded that there were seven churches to whom Jesus addressed the messages to the seven angels of those churches. And we see that right in the first church age, the church of Ephesus, the spirit of the Antichrist crept in. Yes, it crept in in the form of the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And if you read in 
Revelation 2, Jesus said that he hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans, those that want to overpower and overrule the laity. Yes, and we see that that spirit, yes, it's a spirit of the Antichrist. And it crept in right there in the first church age. Right after the departure of the Apostle Paul, after his death, we see that he gave a warning before that and said that after my departure, grievous wolves shall come in that shall not spare the flock. Yes, and out of your own self shall men arise that will teach strange things. Yes, that is what Paul wrote, and so it was also manifested. Now, this Antichrist spirit is a very religious spirit. It is not some dictator that will rise or some... Uh, some uh, creature of some sort that will make a uh, life difficult on earth but it is a very subtle religious spirit and we see right in the beginning in genesis there were two brothers cain and abel and both of them were very religious but one was of the devil and the other one was of god both of them brought a sacrifice before god both of them did their rituals but we see that god accepted abel's offer hallelujah because abel by faith by revelation, he offered a better offer, a more pleasing, accepting offer or sacrifice unto God. We see that God rejected Abel's or uh, Cain's offer. Yes, Cain thought through the works he could please God. But Abel knew that it is by faith. Hallelujah. And so we see that the Antichrist spirit came in the early church as well. And these Nicolaitans were teaching the people that they could be saved by their works instead of by justification by faith, by believing in Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And we see that that spirit of the Antichrist, it developed. Hallelujah. And it went from being the deed of the Nicolaitans, it went into the teaching of Balaam. If you read the third church age of Pergamos, the third church to whom the letter was addressed, the Lord was rebuking that there were those that hold fast to the teaching of Balaam that taught the children of Israel to commit fornication and to eat food sacrifice unto idols. That same Antichrist spirit that was now first a deed became now a doctrine. The same Church of Pergamos, Jesus says you have the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and those that hold the teachings of Balaam. So we see that false teaching started to creep into the church. Now a false teaching, yes, uh, the Antichrist, the word anti means against. So it is against Christ. And who is Christ? The Word. John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. So the Antichrist is against the Word. People started to bring in teachings that were contrary to the Word of God. Teachings that were against the Word of God. Teachings that were against what the apostles had originally taught. Yes, so from a deed it went to a doctrine and then finally that spirit of Antichrist developed so in the church that it went right into that woman Jezebel which called herself a prophetess. And Jesus rebuked the angel to that messenger for allowing the, the angel to that church. He, uh, he rebuked him for allowing that woman Jezebel to teach Yes, and to seduce his servants. And there we see even that servants of God got deceived. They got uh, seduced. Yes, it is possible for man to fail and to fall. But Jesus had it a problem. He had a problem against this woman. This woman that called herself a prophetess. Self-proclaimed prophetesses. And today we have a lot of them. Self-proclaimed apostles. Self-proclaimed preachers self-proclaimed prophetess uh, people that come on the scene and uh, on the scene and appoint themselves that are not appointed of god and the quickest way you can recognize it is when they start to preach and teach things contrary to what the apostles of the lord had taught and we see in revelation 2 verse 2 jesus says to the angel of that church you have tried them that say that they are apostles and are not and have found them to be liars and how do we test them we test them through the word we give them a word test hallelujah if someone is preaching some something contrary to what the apostles were preaching paul even wrote into the thessalonians if any man comes and he teaches or preaches something contrary to what we've taught you that we should reject such a person he even wrote to the Galatians and he said, though we or an angel from heaven comes and preaches something contrary to than that which we have already preached, let him be a curse. Hallelujah. So it is quite serious. 
and we should not take it very uh, very light but we should really take it to heart and examine what we are hearing whether it is in agreement with the scriptures that is written hallelujah whether it is in agreement with the word of god hallelujah so we see that jesus was condemning this woman preacher by the name of Jezebel yes that called herself a prophetess that appointed herself as a prophetess and started to teach and to seduce yes it is through her teaching that she was seducing and today many people are also being seduced by that antichrist spirit by opening up to teachings that are contrary to what Christ and the apostles had taught that antichrist spirit is even in the church today yes and the bible says that in the last days the two spirits will be so close that if possible they would deceive even the very elect now Cain and Abel as we know they were twins so they look so alike they look so similar but we see the one was of God and the other wasn't and today there's also this antichrist spirit in the the religious world out there and we see many people rising saying they are prophets but then they are contradic- contradicting what the prophets of the bible were saying they are contradicting what the apostles of the bible were saying and we are living in the days where the scripture is fulfilled before our eyes Matthew 24 verse 24 and they shall arise false Christ and false prophets and they shall do great signs and wonders if it were possible to deceive the very elect and today if you look at the many miracle workers out there self proclaimed miracle workers out there that are advertising their own miracles and signs that they can do we see that Jesus never did that Jesus didn't advertise signs wonders and miracles he just simply went forth and did it hallelujah he preached the word and then he vindicated the word by giving the signs the same with the apostles they went forth preaching the word and then the signs followed them Jesus says in Mark 16 these signs shall follow them that believe yes the sign will follow you but you just preach the word but we see many of the so called false prophets today that are advertising how they can do miracles we see the same people their teachings and doctrines are different from what Paul and all the other apostles was preaching and many times they even contradict what Jesus was preaching and therefore we should be aware we are living in the day and age which is known as the last time the last days and if you read 1 John chapter 4 We are told in verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confess of not that Jesus is Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of antichrist way of you have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Hallelujah. The spirit of the antichrist was in the world even at the time when the apostle John was writing this epistle in the first century. Hallelujah. So it is a spirit and the spirit of the antichrist is in the false prophets, the many so-called religious leaders today that are doing so-called signs and wonders but in their teachings they are denying Jesus Christ. They are denying the word. And we see that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So there are even spirits that will deny that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Now how did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Through virgin birth. So there are even many antichrists that deny the virgin birth, but Jesus the Bible says the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Now he came through virgin birth, but also he came as God manifested in the flesh. And the antichrists are the ones that deny the deity of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 1 was one in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John chapter 14 the disciple asked Jesus, Lord show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus said, I've been so long with you Philip and you've not known me. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Hallelujah. Christ is God manifested in the flesh and this is what many antichrists deny. They can't believe that Jesus is more than a man, that Jesus is actually God manifested in the flesh. The Bible also says that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord except through the Holy Spirit. Now to say that Jesus is the Lord is not just a generic term to say he's the Lord because everyone says he's the Lord, but when you say that Jesus is the Lord, hallelujah, you are saying that the same Lord of the Old Testament is the same Lord of the 
the New Testament. Yes, the same God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New Testament. Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus of the New Testament. And it is only through the Holy Spirit that you can receive the divine revelation that Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh. But the Antichrist spirit denies it, yes. And that spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. It was back there in the first church age, and that spirit of Antichrist is even in the church world today. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, people will have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Many people are religious to the core, but then they deny the power of God when the power of God manifests. Many people are religious to the core, but then they will de deny plain basic biblical truths, plain basic foundational biblical doctrines yes and this is how we know the spirit of the antichrist and this is what the apostle john was warning the church against already back then and he was telling them that no lie is of the truth now the question is what is the truth pontius pilate was asking jesus what is truth yes and the bible says in romans 3 verse 4 let god be true and let every man be a liar. God's word is the truth, and it remains forever valid. Anything contrary to the word of God is a lie. Yes, it is a lie that originates from the devil. And this is how the empire of the Antichrist thrives, by lying and deceiving and changing and perverting the word of God, by adding and taking away. Now we have the explicit warning in Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to verse 19, that if any man shall add unto the words of the prophecy of this book, God shall add the plagues which is written herein unto him. And if any man take away from this book, then God shall take away his part out of the book of life and other things written therein. And of all the, the promises, you can read the verses yourself. So that is what the Antichrist has been doing, even since the time of the Dark Ages, where the Bible was made available only in the Latin language. We see that the so-called church back then brought in their own laws, their own teachings, that contradicted the Bible, yes. But thank God that he raised men such as the reformers, yes, that protested against that antichrist spirit that was reigning during the time of the Dark Ages. Thank God for men like Martin Luther. Thank God for men like Zwingli. Thank God for men like John Calvin. And the list goes on and on. Men that took their stand for the word of God and protested against the antichrist spirit and the antichrist religious system and that stood for the word of God and preached the word of God in both people like Jan Hus, people that laid down their lives, that were sacrificed, yes, that died as martyrs, fighting that antichrist spirit that came in to change the scripture, to bring its own laws and rules that contradicted the scripture. Now, beloved, that is a lot to say in a nutshell. We shall continue with this teaching of the spirit of the antichrist, but for now, if there's anyone that would like to hear more about it, you can contact me on 083-670-4657. 083-670-4657. Let us just close our eyes for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for giving me boldness and an opportunity that I may teach all nations through this radio station, through this program, and through this platform. I pray, Lord, that you that is sovereign will now take care of the rest of it. May your word not return unto you void, but accomplish the mission and purpose for which you sent it. And I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that your spirit will move. I know the spirit of the Antichrist is out there also trying to oppose, trying to change, trying to fight the word of God. But we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you rule supreme, Lord. You are the overcomer, and through you, we are more than overcomers. May your word reach those that are predestinated to hear it, Lord. Bless each and every listener that were tuned in. And guide us and protect us further now in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now, beloved, thank you once again for your support by tuning in to tonight's broadcast of A Study in the Word with me, Brother Alma. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and be with you. As I go off the air, we listen to that song again, There is a River. Until the next time, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Tidang ragi. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. For the peace of sound from heaven. 
as a rushing oh a mighty wind oh it filled every heart with singing and it gave them peace within Oh yes the prophet gave the promise thank God the spirit shall descend and from their inner most being Says 